Hi, my name is Hannah Jackson, and I'm a PhD student uh, at Michael Siemens Lab here at MIT. And today, I'm excited to talk to you about a new treatment platform for patients with drug resistant epilepsy. So many of you have probably heard of epilepsy or might even know someone affected by it. It's defined as a neurological condition characterized by reoccurring seizures. It can occur at any age, and it may or may not have an identifiable cause. What you probably didn't know about epilepsy, however, is that more people live with it than with autism spectrum disorders, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, and cerebral palsy combined. It's the most common neurological disorder affecting 65 million people globally, regardless of age, sex, race, or income. One in 26 people in the United States will develop epilepsy at some point in their lifetime. But the statistic that I find the most astounding is that 30% of people with epilepsy will not respond to oral medication, leading them to being classified as refractory or drug resistant. That's 30% of patients with uncontrollable seizures, leading to a significant decrease in quality of life and increased risk of death. So why is this? We know that more anti-epileptic drugs are being developed now than ever before, with the global market expected to reach 20 billion by the end of 2026. Yet despite this, the number of patients with drug-resistant epilepsy has not changed. And this is because all of these drugs suffer from the same problem, crossing the blood-brain barrier. Because of this barrier, many of these drugs aren't able to reach their target in therapeutic amounts, leading to uncontrolled seizures. In addition, many of these drugs have significant side effects and toxicity, which makes increasing the dose impossible in many patients. The only real solution for these patients is surgical resection, which is when the portion of the brain containing the seizure focus is removed surgically. This procedure is heavily underutilized, however, and to demonstrate this, 2.1 million Americans suffer from epilepsy with an identifiable seizure focus. Of them, 30% or 630,000 will have drug resistance. And of those, 0.6% will have resection surgery annually. The other 626,000 forego the surgery due to invasiveness, significant comorbidities, um, or the lesion is in an inoperable location in the brain. These patients would benefit from a treatment platform that is less invasive than resection, can target the seizure focus while eliminating off-target effects. For these patients, we propose a refillable infusion system for delivering anti-epileptic drugs directly to the seizure focus. Our device consists of a micron-scale neural implant coupled via catheter to a subcutaneous battery-powered micropump and drug reservoir that would allow for programmable and continuous drug delivery. By bypassing the blood-brain barrier and delivering these drugs directly to the seizure focus, we can achieve greater seizure management with less off-target effects compared to systemic delivery. We would also be able to deliver much smaller concentrations of drugs than what is done systemically, which would further reduce off-target effects. Our device can also be implanted um, in standard techniques used currently for deep brain stimulators and depth electrodes. So the simple implantation procedure would be less invasive than resection and could even be done as an outpatient procedure. And because we're delivering already approved drugs, FDA regulation is simplified and we would create a device master file for each new AED that we would be testing. This neural delivery platform has been in development in the SEMA lab for the past 10 years now, with five scientific publications and two patents on the technology. Our team is working with the University of Utah's anticonvulsant drug development program to make use of their cutting-edge epileptic animal models. So this program has been funded by the NIH since 1975, and every new AED that has come into clinical use in the past 40 years in the U.S. has been evaluated at this program using their models. So currently, there are no devices on the market that can chronically deliver drugs to precise locations deep within the brain, making our device revolutionary and game-changing. We've already developed our device in the lab and even characterized the drug delivery properties in mice, rats, and monkeys. We've shown that we can infuse drugs directly through our implant, and we've even coupled them to subcutaneous micropumps for chronic drug delivery. Our implant uses borosilicate capillaries to deliver drugs, which is a material that's currently used in medical implants, so it's biocompatible. And these capillaries are incredibly small, 20 micron in their diameter. Um, and because they're so small, they actually limit fetal scarring, which causes implants in the brain to clog normally. So through our animal studies, we've shown that these devices remain patent, and we can infuse drugs up to a year post-implantation. 
So currently, we're working with Utah to use our devices to deliver anti-epileptic drugs in a mouse model of temporal lobe epilepsy. Preliminary data so far has shown that we can deliver microliters of these drugs um, that alter neural behavior and then detect this neural activity with electrodes implanted next to our device. So moving forward, we've begun testing our device in a mouse model of epilepsy. Before going to humans, we want to validate it in a larger animal model like monkeys. And then we expect to begin human clinical trials around 2024 in a small population of patients with mesial temporal sclerosis. This patient population has a form of epilepsy that's very difficult to treat, and many are not candidates for surgery because of where the seizure focus is located. So starting in a small beachhead market would allow for a clearly defined patient population with minimal treatment options that would benefit from our proposed device. Our device could revolutionize how epilepsy is treated by providing a treatment platform for millions of patients with drug resistant epilepsy who currently don't have one. The age for AEV drug development is ending, but the age for drug delivery has just begun. And we're just now scratching the surface of what's possible with our device. If you'd like to talk further about our device or have any questions, please come find me at our poster. Thank you for listening. Oh, 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 o